So I think I've decided on where to take this. I think I want to do a 50 millimeter build and I'm not going to mess with the case or anything else. The only, the modification I'm going to do is I'll do a base gasket delete, which still gives me way too big a squish, but you know what? Um, I'm trying to keep to the original kit here, so let's, let's do that. So I'm going to take the big bore off here. I'll find another use for this somewhere, and we can play with that in the future. But let's, for these purposes, let's focus on using the 50 millimeter instead of the 52. Mostly because the 50 is what the kit came with. So let's focus on that. And one of the things that I know the guys online are pretty adamant about is use, using the OEM wrist pin bearings. So I'll do that. So like Walt says, that is effectively hearsay. So we don't really want to read too much into that. But there's nothing wrong with using an OEM wrist pin bearing. Okay, again, I've got just the piston held in, no circlips. Um, I got held in a uh, wrist pin bearing, wrist pin, and I'm going to redo the timing numbers. Or at least I, I have my timing numbers on this one. We already checked them 101, 73, and 123. So I've got, uh, I've got my timing numbers, but what I want to do is I need to reset up my degree wheel, so I'm just going to do that. Okay. So top dead center is right about there. Just need to get it balanced. 46. Visually, it's about top dead center. All right, so there we have the wheel is balanced both sides. Now we need to draw some lines, I think. A good Sharpie. You make your mark right on top of the ring. And now, assuming that's where your target, you know, you pick your target, now you know exactly where to cut to. Now, how exact do you want to get on this? If you want repeatability, if you're going to do a bunch of these, what you do is you get a business card, some heavier paper, and you use that as a guide. Helps if the paper's nice and stiff. Also helps if you cut it nice and straight. Now we can check our paper. Check our paper in there. Eh, a little overcut. Again, just a guide for repeatability. So that ought to do. So you can write on here. 
Now you have that, you can save it. So now that we have the mark, we also decide, have to decide, are, are we cutting to that? Are we not cutting to that? Are we making the transfers different heights, which you can do? Um, you can fiddle around with this like crazy while we're making measurements and things. Let's show you something else. So as a guide, that's pretty good actually. I've got a gasket here and pretty good. But I'd still want to blend this in a little bit. So you can see these metal triangles right here. I'd want to blend that a little bit. And then it's a little controversial, but you can also take this down as well. better flow. So just eliminate all that. That's a couple of quick things to do. How far do you cut? So, how far you cut the, these transfers forward is at least of some debate. Usually I take them a little bit further than the stock. So usually I just grind these a little bit further forward just to blend them. You'll see. Let's play with that a little bit. So I've got my poor man's porting solution out here. So I just go in and angle this in depending on how much I want to cut. You cut however much you want to cut. This has got to be tight. And she definitely wants to chatter. So I've slowed the RPM down a little bit. Down about half. Less chatter now. Produces a pretty smooth edge here. Don't know if you can see it in there, but let's try that. So that's the kind of finish you want. Looks pretty good. Gonna keep going. There. I don't usually completely eliminate the black line that's in there because I'm still gonna put a bevel on this anyway. That way you don't mess up the rings. I like this to come to a little bit more of a point though. Might actually have the wrong burr for that, but that's okay. Looks pretty good. We'll go to the, the main now. So the one towards the intake is actually the secondary, and then you have the main that's here. One thing I want to do with the main is I do want to bring it back towards the exhaust quite a ways. Usually you have enough room to do that.
again, see what happens. Back to it. There we go. There's the picture. So I'm going to keep running this, the main, back towards the exhaust here. don't have a significant enough flat on here so it keeps getting stuck. That's working a little bit better. So here's where we're at down there. So those look pretty good. So let's compare that. There we go. Let's compare that, what I just did, to the other side. So this is stock. And that's ported. So this is the these are just the upper transfers. Obviously, we got to blend the lowers and do the intake and the exhaust, but that's it. That's how I approach porting. You can draw lines and do all kinds of other crazy fun stuff, but that's basically how I how I do it. Well, it was going good right up until I busted the head. So this head here uh, is stripped internally, so the rest of this seems to be all right. But in here, uh, apparently this is stripped out. She's junk. Find something else. What I might do is, maybe I'll try to buy just the heads, I don't know. So while we're waiting to get that figured, because I don't have an extra handpiece here, Let's go back to our straight hand piece and do some of the rest of the porting here. Um, now one thing you can do is you can take this you can take this part down a bit. Um, if you look at the case it would make a whole lot more sense to have that down. Some guys do, some guys don't, whatever. If you want to do it, do it. If you don't want to do it, don't do it. The other thing that helps is to have a, a vacuum system going uh, so that all these chips don't go all over all your good stuff. So. I'll just demonstrate. That seems to be working pretty good. And in here, what you might want to do is take this down first. I usually like to have kind of this straight here, so take a cut down. Not exactly the right bird to get into this corner, but... So now you can see how I'm blending that. So the flow is nice and even across that. And I'm going to want to go in here and kind of grind that back uh, just a little bit. So it's just kind of as straight up and down as possible. So just think about the flow. If the air is going to go in that way, the whole flow has got to be smooth, you know. It's nice and smooth. 
And by the way, you can check it with running water. Let's see. I think I need a vacuum. <laughs> so you get the idea there. Um, obviously, I'm going to do that to the other side, and I'll show you uh, once all that stuff is cleaned up and done. So right now, I'm actually waiting on the uh, another hand piece to show up because the other one this stripped out. So I can't really work on the transfers right now, but I can work on other stuff. So let's move this to bottom dead center. And I've got a ring in here. Put the bolts back down. Easy. And then you bring it up to, well, wherever you want your exhaust. So on a 372, somewhere around 100 is fine. So 90, 100. So it's actually um, before top dead center. So 90, 100. So you bring it all the way around. That marks. Hey, let's do a little conservative at 101. That's fine. Back it off to bottom dead center. And now the ring has you exactly marked of where you want to be. Now if you're using a gasket, then obviously you're going to want the gasket in there when you're making the measurements. Now we can put the saw aside. And now we actually have the ring down in there and it's marking exactly where we need to be. So there's the ring. You can see that. And you can see we really don't have that far to grind. But the exhaust is a little on the narrow side, so we're going to want to widen it just a little bit. A little bit of grinding. It also looks like there's a, a bit of a hump, almost, that just kind of up and over. Right on in here, it's like this, this hump, so we're going to flatten that out. Not much to grind here, so we're going to try to widen this a little bit. Now if you want to do vertical lines, up and down, so you can go top to bottom and draw vertical lines, about um, up to 70% 70, 70 of bore width is kind of where you want to be, so let's measure the bore. So 50 millimeters is the bore, so 5 millimeters is a tenth, um, 7 times 5 is 35. So you do not want this any wider than 35. Now, <laughs> nobody's really explained this to me, whether or not um, this is around the corner or as the crow flies. Just to be conservative, let's set it to 33 millimeters. And what we're going to do is again go back to our paper. You make a cut, 33 millimeters wide. Of course, you got to keep track of what's wide and tall and all that stuff, but whatever. Then you can also, of course, measure it here in the bore. And figure out exactly how high. So 24 and a half millimeters gives you roughly 101 timing from the, uh, from the squish band here. So 24 and a half by 33-ish is where you want that. So now let's pull this out. You can try your cardstock in. So in reality, I don't need to grind that much. And I need to go basically to the edge of where the bevels are maybe a hair beyond to get uh, a little bit wider of an exhaust. So now we mark on here. Now we have our cardstock. So if you need to do another cylinder, you just use the cardstock now, rather than doing the, uh, the ring trick. Then we can go to our intake and see how to deal with that. But let's do the port work on the exhaust first. So 
So here's how I prefer to do my grinding. I've got my vacuum here set up and I can go in like this with this tool and gently feather out the uh, the exhaust depending on where I need it and I can check it with a couple of things. I can check it with my cardstock of course but also if I need to I can take the ring and stick it back in there and get an idea of how flat I am <clears throat> and you want basically the flatter the exhaust is the more crisp the opening and the better the pop but if you make it too flat and then the ring tends to hook and if you hook a ring uh, you're gonna be upset so especially after it takes three four five hours to grind on something like this so don't want to do that don't hook a ring so ideally you want a little bit of a dip right in the center just a little bit that way there's a transition from having uh, a bore to a hole essentially I'm going to turn this on, the vacuum on, and we'll give you a little bit of an idea of grinding here. This bit is a little bit on the round side. I need something a little more pointy. So right in here again, right here. That way you get a nice crisp, crisp opening. A little bit of extra grinding in the middle. Same idea over here. And you want each side to be even. So there you go. The ideal for really polishing are these little sanding wheels. Just try to make it uniform, you know? Nice and smooth. So that's pretty good. The rest of it you can kind of do from the outside here. This is all rough. It's just a rough surface. Gotta take and clean that up. So while we're looking at this side, we might as well uh, look at the muffler. So you do want to match this, ideally. Here's your muffler. That's pretty well matched. Let's have a look this way. That's really not that well matched. Time to get our Sharpie back out. If you want to make yourself completely crazy. A couple of M6 bolts. Just take your Sharpie, and you got a pretty good idea on what you need to grind away. Now you can grind this further, obviously. Um, you can grind that further, you can grind this further. I like using this as a template. Um, it's metal, makes a lot of sense to do that. And then, of course, you can also make sure 
that your exhaust gasket, same thing. And the exhaust gasket fits pretty good, so I'm not that worried about that. Really, it's just the opening here on the cylinder head that needs a little bit of work. You could hog this whole thing out and, and make it huge and do all kinds of crazy stuff. I'm not that worried about that. All I want to do is make the transition smooth here. So now you go back to your big guy and you just go in here and basically make sure that this is all ground. So this is flat, flat, and it looks kind of like a megaphone. The whole thing's got to gotta look like a megaphone. There are guys that actually make a lip right here. Um, I've seen that, and if you got the if you got the uh, the material, I guess you can do that. But I'm not super sure on why you do that. I know that gets into a little more into porting theory. Um, for now, I'm gonna just simply focus on getting this polished up and cleaned up. So this is not gonna get you uh, to pro porter level here, but I think that's pretty good. So you can polish these all day long. I mean, you can really make these shine. Um, I don't. I hit it with those little uh, sanding things. And they're just little sanding drums. Got an entire bag of them. Because you do run through them in a hurry. But you can just get those on eBay. Yeah. And the last detail on the exhaust really is the bevel. you got to make sure you put a bevel on it. So, the tool I use for that, I use a ball diamond. Comes in a Dremel kit. So here's my ball diamond. This is on my Dremel. And I'm going to go in here, and I just want to nick the edges all the way around, just to give a little bit of a bevel. That way the rings don't hook. Nice and slow. That's all you need to do. Go in there all the way around. And it's really hard to me, for me to do it proper while I'm filming. But that's how it should look. I don't know if you can see it. So there you have that. I'd say the uh, exhaust is pretty good at this point. So as you're double check, push the piston down just to keep the ring even. There's a ring in here. And you can check for how flat your uh, exhaust roof or floor or whatever you want to call it. So I can actually see with the ring here, if I'm being really picky, I can see that I need to grind a little bit more on this side than this side. This side's a little lower than this side. Just by a shade. I'll do that. But you get the idea of how to how to do the port work here. So the cylinder's back on just to do intake timing. So you move it around just to look and see and it's all awkward right now, but somewhere around 73. So now what you do is you move it to 80. Assuming that's where you want your intake. Now what I do, there's actually a couple ways to do this. I, I take a uh, I take a razor, just nick. The piston right there. Not really gonna hurt anything. I put a little scratch on the piston so that I can look at it and see how much I need to remove off the intake or the piston, depending on how you want to approach that. Now you can just remove that amount off the piston, or you can grind on the cylinder itself, which is what I usually do. So I guess we're going to do the intake next. We can 
look at the piston here at the intake side and see where I scored it. It looks like it's just under an eighth of an inch of material that I have to remove. Let's take a measurement. About two and a half millimeters. So now, how indeed do we mark that on here? How about we put the piston pin in. We can actually mark on the intake side somewhere that's about two and a half millimeters. But it's kind of difficult to get in there. <clears throat> what I usually do on the intake side is kind of guess and check. But let's do it this way. So the piston's in with the pin. Bring the ring down. And then you bring the piston back up. And it'll bring the ring up evenly. And you bring it up to wherever you want. So right about there. Now again, you can just take your marker. And now you, wear, now you know where to not to cut to. There's your line. And you also have an idea that that line is going to be fairly flat, which of course you can double check later. So now I'm going to grind to that line, and I'm going to try to square off the intake a little bit. Nice thing about intakes is that they don't have rings that go past them, but once well, during installation. So in general, you don't need to worry, worry about a ring hooking quite as much. I'm going to turn the, uh, the vacuum on, but I'm just going to go in here and work on that. Pretty double check with the piston. Looks pretty flat, that line. Looks like it's curved, but it isn't. So you want a nice crisp opening on the intake, if at all possible. And a flat line, a flat floor here gives you that. So I'm just going to go up in here and grind this way. guys get the idea. So there you have the roughed in intake. If you make it too wide you're going to go beyond the skirt and, uh, and you don't want to do that. Um, but I like a nice square intake. Nice and square if at all possible especially most importantly these corners so this corner here and this corner here nice and square and you don't have to go crazy polishing the intake a highly polished intake um, doesn't help with atomization of fuel it's theoretically so I think that'll actually do just fine next place to port match is right here just got to make sure this isn't too big for your intake boot. Put the boot on. You know, it seems to match pretty well right off the bat. There's not going to be any fuel puddling or pooling in there. So I'm going to leave that as is. You can round the lip a little bit, especially up here. Maybe I'll just round the lip just a shade. But really, it, it doesn't need very much of anything. Just so not, it's not quite so sharp. Back to the transfers. I need to rough in the transfers. I finally got my other hand pieces here. So hopefully we'll, we'll, we're going to test the longevity on those. I've already showed you how to rough in the transfers, so I'm just going to go and finish that. Um, then I gotta figure out how I want to polish these. But these look pretty good right off the bat here. 
after the rough in. I'm going to check it with a ring and make sure it's all even all the way around too. So one of the questions is certainly going to be how wide do you take the intake? Well, got to measure. That width right there. So you can just mark it and it, what's nice is if you actually run a used uh, piston cylinder often there'll be a, a little bit of a rub and you'll know exactly where you you don't want to extend to uh, a millimeter or two away from uh, from that rub mark is is where you want to bring your intake to for width anyway one of the things I'm running into here is the fact that the right angle handpiece has too much chatter but that's not because the handpiece that's because um, the burrs that I'm using are probably too big in diameter and they grab too much. So I'm going to try using this one. The, the tip is slightly smaller in diameter. Just need to grind the end so it will fit. And I'm going to grind this one a little bit on the short side, see if that helps too. So as you can see, I fi finished the upper transfers. There's definitely some limitations here on this poor man's porting technique. What I find is that these burrs just chatter too much. It's just so difficult to control them in there that I'm not getting an even grind. And supposedly the single cut ones work better, but that's not been my experience. So um, I don't know what to do other than go to a different configuration, other than, you know. I'll have to look up what burrs are available and see if I can come up with something. I mean, I've gotten it to work. Uh, it isn't perfect. I, I wasn't perfectly able to shape everything in there, but the, the exits of the transfers do look pretty good. And that little sander on here definitely helps, but <laughs> it's just a little too big. It won't quite fit in the transfers. It'll go on the outside and, and again, shines that up real nice, so at least the exit of the transfer looks nice and is nice and even. Um, I got to do the bevels on these upper transfers with the uh, the diamond ball and then I'm gonna finish the lower transfers here. I'm not gonna do anything on this side because it doesn't look like it really needs much. Um, but I'm gonna back this off here and grind this down to be more even and then hopefully That'll be that on this cylinder. We'll call that a night, or a day, or whatever. So I'm going to finish shaping these. Just going to grind that there. Now that that's ground down, I'm going to thin this out and just kind of bevel it around. Like that. Just doing some final touches with the diamond ball. Just doing my bevels on the, the upper transfers right in right in here. That's it. I got my lowers blended, the uppers are beveled, the exhaust is beveled, the in and the out are matched. Not much else to do, I'll get a few high, higher quality photos and try to include them so you can see exactly what I did. No secret here, just time, fiddling, playing. So I'm not a professional porter, I'm just not. I'm okay at doing this, but you know, I, I'm, I'm not amazing by any sense of the word. And one thing that you're going to, well, you may or may not come to the conclusion that I did, but I came to the conclusion that I'm just not that good at this. Um, I'm okay at it. I do get good results. And personally, I'm happy if I get, you know, if, if you have a, a continuum where you have a stock saw and you have the maximum that a porter can, a professional porter can get out of it, I'm happy to be halfway there. I'd like to be 90% there, really, but 
you know, I don't I don't need to be a hundred percent there. I don't have to be um, at the top of the game. I don't I don't have to be that guy. You know, uh, I just want to make a better running saw than stock and have a little bit of fun and hopefully learn something in the process. So this was an interesting thing to do. It's interesting kind of figuring out exactly what's going to happen with this whole uh, poor man's porting thing. Um, not sure exactly where I want to take that, but I think we're going to have more adventures with that in the future. I think it's time to start thinking about putting this cylinder head on the saw. And once we do that, um, really this thing should go together in uh, pretty short order. I'm not really concerned whether I hit my numbers or not. Ah, you know, I guess we can check. Why not, right? Let's check and see if I hit the numbers or not. I'm just not that worried because in, in an ideal world for me, I'm going to put this together once and I'm going to have done my best and I'm going to run it. And that's just how it's going to be. Um, I'm not going to go back in and be like, oh, I need to adjust the transfers or something like that. Um, I'm just not, not there uh, skill level wise. But, uh, you know. So for me, it doesn't really matter whether I hit my numbers or not. It's going to be closer than it was stock. That, I can tell you. And like me, if you decide to wash your cylinder head, The marks tend to disappear. I can still see them, so I'm going to make sure they're dark while I can. So that's exhaust right there. 102. I guess I was aiming for 100. I didn't quite grind quite enough. You know what? I might grind a little bit more off that. Right in the middle. Because it looks like Instead of a hump, I've got a whoop. I need to just touch the exhaust just a shade more. Uh, I'll do that off camera. Um, so it's pretty close, pretty close. I go just a, t a shade more. Uh, intake. That looks good. No free porting on the intake. So, let's see, can you see that gap in there? There we go. So as that closes, there's a gap on this side. So I widened it just a tad too much. And you can also see that it does close eventually, so I'm not that worried about it, but the other side is not quite as bad. Won't make a hood of difference, I don't think. Anyway, all right, check the number. Boom, right there. 79. Darn close to 80. Good, okay. That'll do. And the transfer is a much more difficult number to get. The only way, the only real way I would get it is to put that ring back in there, which I guess I can do. Let me adjust the exhaust just a little bit first. Again, you want the exhaust domed just slightly. This is kind of cup-shaped. And just to look in there and see what I'm talking about. So the, the dead center of the piston closes first, as opposed to the sides which close second, and that's kind of the opposite of the way it should be. A little bit of sanding, rebevel it. That's it. Probably don't even need to grind anything. But while we're doing this, might as well check and see um, where we are with the transfers, right? Grind this first. Great. So I've regrind the exhaust a little bit. While we're checking that number, we also want to check the. Uh, transfers here. So on the transfers I'm not even going to put the uh, 
I'm going to put bottom dead center. I'm not even going to put the screws in here. I'm going to hold it about where I think it's at. Bottom dead center. So let's bring this up to 90, 100, 110, 120. We're aiming for 120. So there's 120. Back it off. Did we get it? Nailed. How's that? Perfect. So on our transfers, we're good. Let's check the exhaust again. Better. As long as you don't hook a ring, we're all set. Let's undo this and start putting it together for real.